Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to improve our vocabulary. Today we'll have our lesson number 82 in the series of vocabulary words. Day number 82. Let's get going. The very first word we're going to learn today, or well, the first two or three words that we're going to learn. As a matter of fact, all the words that we're going to learn today have to do with being old, being out of date, being obsolete, no longer in use. Let's look at the first word. 428. 428. And the word is... How do we pronounce it? It's an adjective. How do we pronounce it? It's pronounced... R. The first, first syllable is R. K, second syllable is K, R, K, ik, archaic. What does it mean when you describe something as being archaic? Which mean, it means it is no longer in use. It is no longer in, it is no longer in use. In use. It is no longer in use. Something that is old. Something that is old fashioned. Something that is ancient, something that is out of date. For example, for example, in today's English, in today's English, we say you, we don't say thou. Thou does not exist. It is no longer used, it does exist. If you pick up Shakespeare's play, you will see. Is written in Old English and in Shakespeare's play you will find many terms, many words in English language that have become, that will qualify today as being archaic. They are no longer used. Nobody speaks like this anymore. It's an archaic, archaic term. Thou. No longer in usage. No longer used because it is too old. Let's learn one more word. The word we're going to learn is again it's an adjective. N T N T Que Tit Antiquated. What does it mean when you describe something as being antiquated? Well it means exactly this. It is it is no longer in use. It is old. It is it is out of date. It is out of date. If something is described as being antiquated, we'll say it is It is obsolete. The difference from what I understand, and I might be wrong in it, but, but the difference from what I understand is that antiquated is typically used for physical things, physical things such as machinery, tools, uh, computers maybe. You might describe something as being antiquated. It is old. It is no longer in use. It's old-fashioned. It's out of date. It is obsolete. Words do not become obsolete, they are just described as being archaic. It's, uh, it's an archaic term. Many times you look up some term, something in the dictionary and it will give you the meaning, but in the, in, the, in the parentheses it will say archaic. That's their way of saying. This is what the word means, but it is no longer used in daily speech anymore. It's too old. It is an archaic term. Do you understand? Or they may give you two different meanings of the words and they'll tell you that this meaning, is the, this meaning of the word is how it is used today, but in the past this word used to mean such and such. But that, that meaning is now archaic. You would not, in that context, you will not say antiquated, you will not say obsolete, you will say archaic. So this is used more in a physical sense, as I said, for machinery, for tools, things of that nature. Let's learn, let's learn one more word, shall we? Let's learn one more word. This next word is actually very simple. And it is not very simple, depending, depending on how you take it. Yesterday we learned this word. Yesterday we learned this word and we learned we learned learned we learned that depending on how the word is pronounced, this word has two different meanings. It can be used as a verb or it can be used as an adjective. And since it is something that we learned yesterday, I'm not going to go over it again. Watch day number 81 and learn it. Learned learned 
and learn it. Learn it and learn. Same thing here. This word has two different meanings depending on how you pronounce it. You must pronounce it properly in the proper context. Depending on how the word is being used, you have to figure out from the context it is whether it is being used, uh, whether it is, is to be pronounced one way or the other. It has two different meanings. We can pronounce this as Let's do the simple one first. Aged, aged, you see, aged. There should be E in there. Aged, a sound aged, which simply means of the age, of the age of, of the age of, aged, aged. I have two kids. I have two kids aged aged three and seven I have two children I have two children aged aged three and seven the same exact word can be pronounced as this the same exact word can be pronounced as Aged. If you describe something as being aged, that means it's old, it's obsolete. Just like, just like learned and learn it. Aged, aged, and aged. Aged, 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 learn, learn it. Learned simply is the past tense of learn. Learn it means you're scholarly. You, you're well read. You know a lot. You have a lot of knowledge. Michael is learned. Michael is learned. In that context, we will not say learned. He's learned. Michael is also aged. He's very old. Now, here we're not talking about obsolete. We're not saying that he's obsolete. We're saying he's very old. I, that aged that, that aged man, that aged infirm man, was trying to cross the street. And the young boy helped him. The young boy helped the aged man. You will not say aged man. The young boy held the aged man, aged gentleman, across the street. Aged infirm gentleman. What does infirm mean? Infirm means literally. Literally it means it's not firm. It's, if it's not firm, it's weak. So if you describe something as being infirm, that means he's weak. He, he doesn't have too much strength. So the young boy helped the aged man, aged infirm man. Across the street is aged and age. Let's move on. Let's move on to something new, something different. We don't want to take too much time here. Next, next two words that we're going to learn are also going to be. Next word we're going to learn are also going to be. Is also going to be rather next word, not words. The next word we're going to learn is also going to be about being old. Let's learn it. And the word is. adjective it has the prefix of anti anti and then it has a suffix of diluvian the lu vi un again it has a prefix of anti and a suffix of diluvian Diluvian, antediluvian. What does it mean? Well, literally, literally, diluvian means flood, and anti means before. Anti means before. So, what does the word literally mean? It it, it can it can be it has a literal meaning, and it can be used metaphorically. It, has a met it is used, most often it is used metaphorically, of course, it is used in a metaphorical sense. Literally it means before, before, before the flood. Which flood they are talking about when they say before the flood? If you say that this thing is antediluvian, you are telling me that this thing is so old 
that it, it, it existed before the flood. The flood that they're talking about is Noah's flood. Well, if it existed from that time, it's of course very old. That's what it means metaphorically. It's very old. It's ancient. It's ancient. It's very old. It's obsolete. It's obsolete. It's time we change our computer. We have had it for almost seven years now. By today's standards, it is antediluvian. By today's standard, because the technology has moved on so much in seven years, seven years, seven years is a, is a eternity is an eternity when it comes to computer technology. That's a very long time to not have changed the computers. It is almost antediluvian. It's very old. It's ancient. It is obsolete for crying out loud. Change it. Buy a new one. That computer is antediluvian. It belongs to the time period before the flood. Do you understand? And since you still have it, that means Noah must have put that computer on his board as he was leaving. And somehow you got hold of it. Let's move on, shall we? Let's something new. Let's something, something new. Something new that we're going to learn is, we're done with this thing. Something new that we're going to learn is, this term right here, anti. Anti has two meanings. Anti has two meanings. One meaning we already learned which is before or earlier or prior. Prior. And the words that we can gather from, from, from this meaning of anti, from the words that we can learn from this meaning of anti which means before are words such as Antecedent, which means something that occurs before, and the, I shouldn't take up this much room because we're going to write the second meaning there, and T C antecedent, that means something coming or occurring before, something coming or occurring before. Something coming or occurring before is said to be antecedent. We're going to learn two more words with this, this meaning of before, ante, but we'll do that a little bit later on the top here. But let me finish the second meaning. The second meaning of ante is a bet. If you're gambling, if you're ba gambling and you place a bet, well, you just, you just put place an ante. It's a price. It can be used as a bet, as a prize, or a stake. And the term that we use is he up the ante. He up the ante. Here, here, is strangely enough, the word up. The word up is being used as a verb. The word up, which we typically do, do not use as a verb, here it is being used as a, as, a, as a verb. What did he do? Well, when he found out, I was, I was in negotiation, I was in negotiation with, with Michael to buy his house, to buy his house, and when he learned that the reason why I want to buy his house is because my brother lives down the street and I would like, I, I would like to move closer to my brother. When, when he found out that that's the reason why I want to buy his house, what do you suppose he did? He upped the ante. He increased the price. He upped the ante. He increased the bet. He increased the stakes. To up the ante means to increase your bet, to increase your price, to, in, to increase what is at stakes. You understand? Let's learn two more words. Let's learn two more words which have to do with this meaning here. Why don't we squeeze them somewhere here? Let's then squeeze them right here.
antidate, which means to be to be of earlier date. A simple word, antidate, NT as in before and date. Very simple. Let's learn one more. Anti mer red e anti meridian. Anti meridian has two parts to it: suffix and the prefix. Suffix, of course, or rather prefix and suffix. The pre prefix, of course, means before, and suffix here meridian means noon. Meridian means noon. Anti meridian means before noon, which is why we say 8 a.m. I want you to move, I want you to meet me at the airport at 8 a.m. I want you to meet me at 8 o'clock. Well, 8 o'clock when? In the morning or in the evening? No, 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 not 8 p.m. I want you to meet me at in the morning. I want you to meet me at 8 a.m. 8 o'clock before the noon. Not the 8 o'clock after the noon. Anti-meridian. Before noon. Bye now.